Hello, viewers. In today's webinar, we'll be covering 3D printing in two highly regulated industries, food and beverage and medical. Both of these industries experience many of the same challenges that general manufacturers deal with, challenges that can easily be resolved with 3D printing in the majority of cases. However, for decades, 3D printing was not able to produce parts in these two industries because of the lack of food safe and biocompatible materials, equipment, and workflows. But we live in the 21st century now, and 3D printing has come a long way. Formlabs has answered the call for providing biocompatible materials for use in their SLA and SLS printers, and Mark Forged has done the same, but for food safe materials in their composite FDM printers. Now, before I dive into those materials, equipment, and workflows, I first want to discuss how biocompatibility and food safety ratings are evaluated, and it's all about risk. The certifications that grant a material or product as biocompatible per ISO 10993 or food safe per NSF ANSI 51 or FDA CFR Title 21 evaluate the combination of the probability of the occurrence of harm and severity of that harm. Just a fancy way of defining risk. For biocompatibility, ISO 10993 has this huge table for evaluating biological risk analyzing everything from contact type and contact duration to chemical makeup and toxicity tests required. During development of their biocompatible resins, Formlabs evaluates intended clinical use to address risks associated with how their customers could use these resins. By understanding the intended clinical use, Formlabs can select the proper endpoints for assessing the raw materials comprising the resin. And Formlabs selects raw materials that are well characterized with safety profiles that are well documented or historically used in medical devices, which both accelerate the certification process and assuages concerns from customers and patients. Once cleared and the resin is tested for biological safety, Formlabs must maintain the minimized risk during the resin's mass production phase. They do this by making the resins in an ISO Class A clean room staffed by Formlabs Regulatory Affairs and Quality Assurance Team. This clean room is housed in a facility with a robust quality management system that is ISO 13485 certified. Rigorous QC testing of incoming raw materials and batch testing of every material lot is just part and parcel of Formlabs' dedication to providing low-risk materials that are saving lives. For food safety, the NSF and FDA certify based on migration risk. For a material or product to be food safe, it must adhere to the following listed here. These all contribute to risk mitigation. The risks being migration of substances within the material into food, foreign object debris making its way into food, and microbial contamination. Just like Formlabs, Mark Forge had to undergo a series of similar risk assessment stages with the NSF and FDA for their nylon white FS to be certified safe for food contact, passing all food contact categories except alcohol, which is a unique category anyways. These stages include reviews on formulation, toxicology, cleanliness, and a manufacturing facility audit. This probably sounds familiar to what we just talked about with Formlabs because the food safety risk assessment process is basically the same as the biocompatibility process. Okay, so enough boring stuff. Let's take a look at the materials. Since we just touched on it, Mark Forged has a dedicated food safe material called Nylon White FS, the FS standing for food safe. It actually has the same formulation as Nylon White, but it's undergone the necessary testing to certify it. Both Nylon White and Nylon White FS are printable on the FX10, which is the only printer capable of printing both of these. This is because the FX10 prints Nylon White FS really well, far better than on the Mark II or X7. Formlabs has seven medical grade materials for applications where performance, biocompatibility, and sterilizability are critical. These are all made in Formlabs certified manufacturing space and clean room. This table here shows their contact type, duration, endpoints, and sterilization method, 
mirroring the ISO 10993 table we saw earlier. Use this table and the material properties listed in the corresponding technical data sheets to determine what material you should use for your medical application. Now, if we scroll down a little further in this table, you'll notice there are some non-biomed resins and even SLS powders listed here. These materials have also undergone in past relevant biocompatibility risk certifications, mostly in response to customer requests, because materials like silicon 40A are often used to make consumer wearables, and nylon 12, for instance, being used to make prosthetics. Just note that these non-biomed materials are not made in the ISO 13485 certified facility and Class 8 clean room like the biomed resins are. Lastly, to print with the biomed resins, you need a B-series printer like a Form 3B or Form 4BL, for example. These printers can also print the non-biomed materials as well. Now, with all this certification talk, there is one very important note. The materials themselves have been certified. That means that the parts you decide to print with them may or may not be considered food safe or biocompatible. Fortunately, there are design and manufacturing guides available to assist with minimizing these risks. Mark Forged has a 3D printing guide for food and beverage applications covering proper workflows and design criteria. Recall that to ensure food safety per the NSF and FDA, it's important to minimize migration risks. Therefore, Mark Forge requires dedicated consumables at a minimum for those using their FX10 for nylon white FS and a non-food safe material like Onyx, for example. Migration risks are particularly important to keep in mind with FDM parts since they feature striated surfaces due to the layer by layer building action. This produces a non-smooth semi-porous surface both of which interfere with the FDA's food safe criteria. One of the risk factors I mentioned earlier is microbial contamination. Because the surface is hard to clean, there is a high risk for microbial growth on FDM parts. This is why Mark Forge Guide specifies the goal of minimizing moisture buildup and microorganism growth and to manufacture parts that are easy to clean and sanitize. Their design guide fortunately assists with that by specifying things like designing with 90 degree sidewalls, for instance, to eliminate stepping. Smoothing FDM services via vapor smoothing or sealing with a food safe epoxy helps to increase food safety of the parts themselves beyond just the material, but food safety testing still needs to be performed by the end user. Mark Forged has the ability to control manufacturing a material that is food safe but they can't control how the end user manufactures with this material downstream. Therefore, for direct food contact applications, it is the end user's responsibility to validate that printed parts meet their specific food safety standards and requirements. Formlabs has manufacturing guides for each biomed resin that go through every stage of the resin printing process. Like we saw with Mark Forged, Separate consumables need to be used by those with B-series printers that print both biomed and non-biomed resins. This includes things like a dedicated bill plate and wash station to maintain biocompatibility. Now, as long as the design guide and manufacturing guide are being followed, the 3D printed part poses a low risk of harm to the patient. Formlabs develop these guides under risk assessment scrutiny, after all. That said, there is a disclaimer that reads, Users should independently verify the suitability of the printed parts for their particular application and intended purpose. A very similar disclaimer to what we saw in the Mark Forge guide. To reiterate, this statement exists because with any process, there are discrepancies that the OEM cannot account for. For example, washing parts with 99% isopropyl alcohol in an automated wash station for the recommended time has shown that parts are sufficiently clear of uncured resin on average. But what about those customers with 99% IPA that's been used to wash half a dozen parts already? That's why Formlab states to wash your parts for this amount of time or until clean to ensure you are held accountable for a clean part that maintains its biocompatibility. Now, while cleaning instructions were built into Mark Ford's guide, Formlab sterilization instructions are contained in the specific resin's technical data sheet. 
Okay, so up to this point, we've discussed the factors that govern risk mitigation and the process Mark Forged and Form Labs face to certify their materials for biocompatibility and food safety. We've also looked at the materials that meet the aforementioned requirements offered by both Mark Forge and Form Labs. And we've discussed the guidelines you need to follow to validate your part is safe for its intended use. Therefore, our last section covers the real life applications of 3D printed parts from food safe and biocompatible materials. For the longest time, 3D printed parts in the food and beverage industry were isolated to secondary and tertiary packaging since this is about as far away from the food as you can get. Despite the lack of food safe materials, customers were still able to take full advantage of 3D printing's power. The Australian Meat Processing Corporation uses 3D printing to produce hinges for label makers and gears for their leather tannery drum. Without 3D printing, they would have had to buy all new label makers since those hinges are no longer in production, or they would have lost $10,000 a day waiting for a machine gear instead of just running with a fiber reinforced 3D printed gear while they wait for the machine part. With the introduction of food safe materials, 3D printed parts can now be present in food production areas and even touching the food, which just expands the range of applications, saving food and beverage companies time and money. For example, Control Logic designs and manufactures custom tooling for the food and beverage industry, including 3D printed food contact tooling like this cookie manipulator. Access to Mark Ford's Nylon White FS has expanded their applications by 35%. They and others have seen rapid ROI by 3D printing their own vacuum grippers to handle food packaging of varying sizes and custom pushers for a host of different products and conveyors. And let's not forget 3D printing's bread and butter application, rapid prototyping. Since prototypes are for testing purposes, companies like Hyphen have used Formlabs SLA printers to produce and test tray holders, augers, and hoppers with different food types as part of their innovative automated food bowl assembly machine. After multiple iterations, they can produce the final part via high dollar traditional techniques with confidence it will work right off the bat. Access to biocompatible 3D printing resins means companies like Axial 3D can now produce surgical planning models for use in the OR. Before, surgical planning was an office-only activity. That meant surgeons had to rely on images or their own memory when it came time to operate. But surgeons are tactile learners, and having OR access to a one-to-one -one model of improperly healed forearm bones, for example, results in a less invasive operation and a three-hour reduction in OR time, both of which culminates in $5,500 saved by the hospital. Medical models are super useful, but what if you need to make an incision in a specific area? Or you need to drill into bone at a precise angle? Getting custom, patient-specific surgical guides made is expensive and time-consuming, the latter being unacceptable when the patient is in pain. Because Formlabs Biomed resins feature materials that are short-term bone, tissue, and mucosal membrane safe and long-term skin safe, you can simply 3D print surgical guides. Yale University uses Synopsys Simpleware to create 3D models from 2D CT and MRI scans, surgical guides then being designed around these 3D models. This workflow was crucial when it came time for a femoral neck stabilization procedure. This operation requires precise positioning of guide wires to place implants correctly into the femoral neck and ball. Thanks to 3D printing's ability to iterate quickly and inexpensively, Yale was able to produce surgical guides for three different versions of the operation, helping identify the method that aligns the screws most accurately to minimize the risk of a post-op fracture. 3D printing is not limited to use by medical research labs and surgical planning firms. Some hospitals like Northwell Health, New York's largest health system, have a 3D printing division in-house. When ventilators were in high demand during COVID-19, Northwell Health came up with the ingenious idea to convert the BiPAP machines used for sleep apnea patients into ventilators. In order to convert them, they designed an airway diverter in Biomed Clear, printing the first prototype less than 24 hours later. After receiving an emergency use authorization from the FDA, Northwell Health began mass production, printing up to 200 adapters in a single day. 
At only $4 per device, 3D printing saved them from the long lead times and $25,000 price tag that came with a new ventilator at the time. Ultimately, 450 BiPAP adapters were used, undoubtedly saving many lives. I mentioned earlier that some of the non-biomed materials, particularly the SLS powders, are certified safe for certain medical applications. This is because prosthetics and orthotics, both of which feature highly organic shapes that need to print supportless, are very commonly printed on the Fuse One Plus. Partial Hand Solutions was providing injection molded prosthetic fingers, but with only five size offerings and two week lead times, and pair customers were growing dissatisfied. Since SLS has long been out of reach for small and medium sized businesses, they've had to maintain the status quo. The Fuse One Plus, however, has lowered the barrier to entry into SLS, so Partial Hand Solutions bought one. With the help of their new printer, the fingers are now more affordable, allow for greater design freedom, are much faster to make at 160 parts in two days, and equally as durable as before. Plus, they can print the joints in place, an ability wholly unique to 3D printing, and one that ultimately simplified the assembly process. Orthotics manufacturing is traditionally a highly manual process. Crewat was experiencing the pain points that we are all too familiar with, difficulty finding and keeping capable personnel. Therefore, they bought two Fuse One Plus printers and now print up to 100 orthotics a day. They can make them custom for less because they don't have to deal with forms and there's less sanding and grinding in post. With 3D printing, Crewat now has the ability to produce a perfect fitting insole in 24 hours and are on track to produce 10,000 orthotics this year. Before we wrap this up, I wanna mention that if your application does not warrant use of the materials and workflows we discussed here, there are some workarounds. For instance, Formlabs does not provide any food safe 3D printing resins, but that doesn't mean Formlabs resin printers are out of the picture. They and other 3D printers can be used to print patterns and masters used to create tooling. While it wouldn't be safe to mold and eat chocolates made in an SLA mold, you can use that mold to produce a vacuum formed mold that captures the intricate details of the resin print, but it's easy to clean and made from a food safe plastic. And with all that information, that is finally all from me. I'll see you all in the next one.